In the last video, I described how to determine which tissue types express the mRNA for your favorite gene. One of those tissue types will act as the source from which we can obtain the mRNA of interest. We want to convert the mRNA to a complementary DNA or cDNA copy. Making a cDNA copy of the mRNA will allow us to amplify or make many more copies of the sequence in preparation for cloning. The first step is to isolate mRNA from the cells. Again, we're not going to worry about the details of how to do this, but I'll just note that you can separate mRNA from other types of RNA, such as ribosomal RNA or transfer RNA, using an affinity column containing an oligonucleotide with a string of consecutive T bases, which can base pair with the poly A tail of mature mRNAs. To make a complementary DNA copy of the mRNA, we use an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which is found in RNA viruses. This enzyme synthesizes a DNA strand using an RNA template, something regular DNA polymerases can't do. As a primer, we use a poly-T oligonucleotide, which is complementary to the poly-A tail, and we end up with an RNA-DNA hybrid. To get double-stranded DNA, we need to replace the mRNA strand with DNA. You can add an RNA's enzyme to degrade the original mRNA. In the same tube, you include a DNA polymerase and deoxynucleoside triphosphates. The polymerase will use the partially digested mRNA as a primer to synthesize the second DNA strand. This process is easier to imagine using diagrams. The red line represents an mRNA strand in our PrEP. To this, we add a poly-T primer, which can anneal to the three prime end of the mRNA. Including reverse transcriptase in the mixture results in synthesis of a DNA strand that is complementary to the original mRNA. Now we add three enzymes. RNAs H specifically degrades RNA that is bound to a complementary DNA strand. It will degrade the RNA in random locations. As this happens, we'll have partial segments of RNA bound to the DNA. These RNA fragments can act as primers for DNA polymerase, which will synthesize new DNA using the top DNA strand as a template. Eventually, all the RNA will be degraded, and a completely complementary strand will be synthesized and DNA ligase will join together any NICs in the newly synthesized DNA strand. We will end up with double-stranded cDNA representing all mRNAs in the starting tissue. Now we need a way to make many copies of only the mRNA that we're interested in, so we can isolate it from the other mRNAs in the mixture. For that, we will use polymerase chain reaction, which I'll describe in the next video.